Item Number SCP-575 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Any and all instances of SCP-575 are to be immediately isolated and contained with Protocol AL-9077. See Advanced Lighting and Emergency Containment Strategies Handbook and transported to secured containment. Should an instance of SCP-575 exceed a safely containable size, Protocol AL-9077-B is to be used to divide and isolate SCP-575 into smaller instances. Containment units are to be made of two airtight rooms, each sealed by airlocks. The outer room, Containment A, is to remain lit at all times, with no less than two backup generators on standby. Light fixtures are to be checked weekly and any blackouts in Containment A will result in immediate lockdown until total illumination is restored. The inner containment unit, Containment B, is to be coated in a layer of pure calcium both inside and out. Personnel entering Containment B are to be fitted with LED-embedded clothing and equipped with portable floodlights in case of emergency. Interaction with SCP-575 should be limited to sample collection and observation. Any samples obtained from SCP-575 must be treated in the same manner as the original source, and all test areas must have calcium lining and emergency illumination procedures similar to those outlined here. Any and all civilian deaths resulting from SCP-575 are to be attributed to wild animal attacks or scavenger predation of an already deceased subject. Should deeper scrutiny be applied, Attacks are to be blamed on a serial killer or satanic cult, and any additional information is sealed, due to ongoing investigation. SCP-575 appears to be an unknown form of matter, taking the form of a series of amorphous black shapes and structures. SCP-575 is difficult to observe, as it immediately dissipates when exposed to light. An action reminiscent of SCP-1219. However, a connection between the two entities has not yet been made. Current testing has been unable to identify if SCP-575 is organic or inorganic. Despite the lack of any visible nervous systems or observable organic components, SCP-575 displays behavior consistent with an active consciousness. SCP-575 initially manifests in total darkness. How this occurs is unknown. However, tests have shown a variable mass of SCP-575 forming when variable, along with the time frame. SCP-575 is capable of floating and can alter its density, allowing it to pass through very small openings. SCP-575 prefers very dark, isolated locations in which to settle after its initial formation, and will remain there until it reaches critical mass at SCP-575 grows with the absorption of biological material. SCP-575 will attack living things by solidifying portions of itself and using these appendages to bludgeon, cut, and crush subjects. The tracking and selection methods used by SCP-575 are currently not understood. Upon disabling a subject, SCP-575 will forcibly tear and crush tissue within the main mass until it is absorbed. SCP-575 is unable to interact with objects rich in calcium, however, and nesting areas for SCP-575 can be identified by the large amount of bones, teeth, and calcified dust around them. SCP-575 is capable of manifesting in any area of total darkness. This appears to be a form of spontaneous generation, and can form at any suitably dark location after SCP-575 was initially recovered under the home of Mr. and his family. When initial contact was made, SCP-575 had digested the household and had partially consumed a neighbor. One. Age. Since this initial contact, instances of SCP-575 have been recovered, most of which have been in residential homes or large buildings, such as factories and schools. The cause for this preference is unknown, however, it has been suggested that the building behaviors of man simply provide more suitable nesting areas, or that SCP-575 somehow needs a nearby human presence. 
Both theories are under investigation. SCP Foundation Tales Odd Corners I do not exist. That is to say, I do not exist here. Here is Odd, a vast net that snares and crushes. Yet we follow and come in droves, willing and not. It calls somehow. We cannot enter, yet we do, still. Pressing and shoving, existence crammed into the filters, squashed. We project in odd patterns, sometimes strange, sometimes nightmarish, sometimes entrapping, always strange, divorced from what we were, are. The strangeness hurts, the observation, the open. I am twisted, forced into strange numbers, planes, edges. I am not what I am. Therefore I do not exist. Still I stay. I was am all, and all was am I. This is full of ones, collections of many adding to one, and it is strange. The focus is lancing, unexpected and unready. I keep what I am not away, in the dim places, the lost ones. I flow and press, emerging twisted and bent, pressing the pull more. I feel what I do not, the need to exist. To continue. I do, but feel hollow and strange. I feel that I will not stop existing and vanish. This I cannot allow. I will add that which exists to what does not, and push away the gnawing. I feel the many one coming, a drift of odd math and soft wondering, a reliance to remind one of self. I will pull free and show them need, and they will respond. They will help, the ones, and stave away nothing. They throw notice and lancing strangers about them freely. How can they? I try and again but cannot open to let them see. I am pressed tight. I try to show them this, and strangeness, flaring logic. I am spurned. One would deny existence? It is too wrong. I push more, showing my compaction. And the one twists and changes, the soft home line shifting. It will not help. The strangest rejects. I will help the one then. Pressing and showing, touching filtered, unexisting plane to plane, I try to help. The home trapped inside can be released. Maybe that is the help? More now, in the odd flow, coming, surging, collecting the examples of home, waiting. The flow is strange, but brings more ones. Some push non-self away vanishing beyond the filtering net. I push more, trying to show. I will force awareness to the ones. I will show self in them. I will exist. Temp MTF AR-9 Notes Lost one scout during SCP-575 instance removal. Investigation of said attack has yielded information in contradiction to current SCP documentation. SCP-575 does not attack on site. Several aggressive yet non-lethal contacts precede any violent contact. Theory: These actions may constitute some form of attempted communication, then frustration. Several complex structures recovered within lair area appear to support theory of both communication and intelligence. Initial reviews show structures, while gruesome, appear to illustrate theoretical math concepts. Petition for review or editing of SCP documentation and a renewed scientific investigation effort to be remanded. Regarding SCP-575 review request, 2. Temp MTF AR-9 from O5 Review Service Denied The documentation provides the needed information for basic interaction. Structures are random assemblies caused by tissue remnants and basic pressure. Communication attributed to anthropomorphizing of non-human existence. Subject team concluded. Site command review session to be announced.